Democracy in Chains is the intellectual history of our present political moment. It provides the backstory for the rise of the radical right that is transforming American politics through a look at the life and the ideas of James McGill Buchanan. I call James Buchanan the critical missing piece because we need to understand James Buchanan's ideas in order to make sense of the strategy that is being pursued by this uh, billionaire-backed radical right. I never set out to write this book. I did not go looking for James McGill Buchanan. I'd never heard of him when I started researching this book. I uh, had just finished another book and I learned about the school closures in Prince Edward County, Virginia in reaction to Brown versus Board of Education. And then in the course of digging into that story, I came across a footnote about Buchanan's work. And then someone alerted me to another footnote <laughs> that contained a report that Buchanan's Virginia school had had a more lasting impact on Chile than Friedman's Chicago school. So then I was really curious, and I began to dig into uh, the Buchanan story as well. After he died in January of 2013, I finally, by September, was able to get into his papers. And that's where my hypotheses were confirmed, and I found some really interesting stuff. This was absolutely stunning to me as a researcher to go into what was called Buchanan House Archives, because it was not an archive in the way that I have ever experienced before. It was a big old rambling house, and there were filing cabinets everywhere, everywhere, including some of the best early stuff was under a stairwell. There were two filing cabinets. They were chaos. I've actually never seen anything like it. So you would go into a cabinet and you'd see file folders labeled, you know, QRS, and then it would just be stuff, <laughs> you know, that made no sense. So I came through the main door into the office and I just thought, what am I going to do? So I thought, well, be methodical. You know, so I just turned left and started going through the piles there. The first heart-stopping moment for me in the archives was when I came across the correspondence between Buchanan and his hosts in Chile, who were people who were involved with the Pinochet junta. They invited him in to advise him them on how to draft a constitution that would, uh, in the words of a later popularly elected Chilean president, put uh, a constitution with locks and bolts that would make it so even super majorities of the people could not achieve what they wanted to because of this constitution. And Buchanan went and provided very, very specific advice about how to craft that constitution with to put in those locks and bolts. But what was most chilling to me about it was that Buchanan came back from that trip and this is after all the horrors of the junta are in the news. They had purged people from universities. The mass killings had occurred in the stadium. I mean, it was just a human rights nightmare. And Buchanan came back and wrote a thank you note. And he thanked one of his hosts, one of the regime officials, for, the, let me get the words right, the very fine dinner you held in my honor and the nice wines you sent. And my wife loved the jewelry. And that's when I thought, wow. Who am I really dealing with here? Who is this person?